Okay, so maths week seven. So what we did is today um, we had a meeting Monday and Wednesday we'll also have the same meeting um, at 2 p.m. And then Friday we'll have a meeting at 2 p.m. Monday, today we basically went over what is a irregular polygon and what is the difference between that and an irregular polygon. Remember, regular polygons are things like squares, um, equilateral triangles, um, your pentagons, hexagons, octagons, heptagons, all those things, nonagons, um, those types of things. And then we went over what is the formula for perimeter and area. So what you need to keep in mind is with a regular polygon, because all the sides are the same, so like in a square, it will be four times side for perimeter. And the same with it with the triangle, you've got three sides, so it'd be three times side. Because all the sides are exactly the same. So that's why we're saying, well, instead of having just three plus three plus three, we're just gonna go three times three. Because we've got one, two, three sides, and they are all three centimeters long. So that's what happens with a regular polygon. But now your regular ones are just a little bit different. So it's like when I give you a rectangle. A rectangle has that side and that side the same, but that side and that side is also the same but different. So this one will be, say for instance, three. So that means this will be three, but then this is a different number to that one. So it can be two, it can be 3,5, it can be five, whatever. So that means that if that is 5, then those two lines are showing that that will also be 5. Okay, so that is what happens with irregular polygons. So irregular polygons are just ones that have different size lengths. They're not all the same size. So what's going to happen on Friday is Wednesday I will go over, sorry, Wednesday I will go over what you should have done. So exercise one, two, and the problem solving, I'll go over on Wednesday. And then on Friday, I want to cover what surface area is. Okay, so surface area I'm going to cover on Friday. And this is also about the formula and where it comes from, why you're doing it, um, what it is, all those kinds of things. The only thing I want you to do is to go up into the investigation part. I'll go through exercise with exercise one with you on Friday. Okay, so that's that. Um, LO is pretty much just all about world of work. So it's kind of preparing you for your career, upcoming careers, all that kind of stuff. Getting you um, into knowing what different things there are, what fields there are, um, what you need to know for each thing. So what subjects you'll need in school, opportunities that job will give you. Um, environment, all that kind of stuff. So challenges, everything. Okay, so that's what will be happening this week. So when you look at regular polygons, this was from last week. So say for instance, they are saying that this is say eight centimeters. So that means that because these are all regular polygons, we're assuming that this will be a square because that and that will be the same size and that and that will be the same size. And that means that those will be the same sizes, those will be the same sizes, and those will be the same sizes. But because they didn't give us any other information, we can also assume that these are going to be our equilateral triangles. So that means that if this is 8 centimeters, that will also be 8 centimeters, 8 centimeters, 8 centimeters, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. So what happens is, now, instead of us writing 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8, we are then going to go and take it and say, well, if we start from this side and we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, there's 12 lines. So those 12 lines are all 8 centimeters. We basically just going to go 12 times 8 because we've got 12 lines and they're all 8 centimeters. So that is how we get the perimeter of the shape. Okay, but we can't do that with irregular polygons. Area stays pretty much the same. But what happens with these is you will then have to take 
the perimeter of this side plus this side plus this side to give you the perimeter. So you actually have two, all different sizes. So you've got 4, 2, 4, 5, and 6, 2. So they're all different sizes, and that will give you the perimeter of the shape, the outside of the shape. Okay, if you need to do the area, remember the formula is half base times perpendicular height. If you don't know how you get to that, let me just show you quickly. So what happens is, is the formula half base times height is actually coming from a rectangle. So if you draw a rectangle for yourself, okay, so we've got a rectangle and we've got this is 5 and then that's 5. So that means um, this would be a, another number, let's just say 2. So that's 2 and 2. So that means that this is 2 and this is 5. There's my base of my triangle and my height. Okay, but now we're looking at the whole rectangle. But then, we actually want to change this rectangle into a triangle. And by doing that, we're going to cut it in half to make a triangle. So, because we've cut it in half, we have got half base times height. Half base times height. But, if you get something that looks similar to this, where you've got a weird little rectangle... Oh, sorry, square here showing you your perpendicular line. So that means that these numbers would be the base and the height. But now you don't know which one is the base or the height. What you can do is because either one or on either side, it doesn't matter. If you try it and you see half times 7 times 8, that's going to give me 28. Because half of 8 is 4, 4 times 7 is 28. Same thing here, half of 8 times 7, same thing. Half of 8 is 4, times 7 is 28. So that means your answer is going to be the same no matter which way you put it. Why? Because we've got a times in the middle. Anyways, doesn't matter, you don't need to know it off by heart, it's just for in case. And it is always the perpendicular height. This little square for your perpendicular is your key. It's going to tell you your bottom of your shape, your base, and it's going to tell you your height. So that is your little cheat sheet right there. Okay, so what happens now is they give you in question one. So they are going to say to you, we've got a polygon, A, B, C, D, with a perimeter of that. And we've got the sides A, B is 5, B, C is 2, A, B. And CD is a half AB. So we've got basically a perimeter is when we're adding all the sides together. We know that there's four sides because it's ABCD. So we're going to add the sides together. We know that the perimeter is 29,5. And then they said AB is 5. They said BC is 2 times AB. AB, remember, is 5. So that means BC is going to be 2 times 5. Then they said CD is half of AB. Half of AB, AB is 5. So that means half of 5. And we don't know what AD is, which we need to look at what that is. Then it says, we're going to take 5 plus 2 times 5 is 10, and half of 5 is 2 comma 5. We're going to add that together, which is going to give us 17 comma 5. And we need to know 17 comma 5 plus what is going to give us 29 comma 5. So let's see. If we've got 17, 5, we need to get a 29. So 17, 17 plus 10 is 27, 5. But we need 29, so we actually need two more. So that means it's going to become 12 centimeters. So 80 is 12 centimeters. Then for number two, all I've done, they wanted us to draw it. So all I, I've done now is I've taken 5. And I just drew a line down. You can even draw it to the side. It doesn't matter. But I drew a line down for 5 centimeters. AB is 5. Then they said that BC is 10 centimeters. And then they said that CD is 2,5. And then if I connect it, it should tell me that it's 12 centimeters. All right. Then it says to me in number 3, 1.3, it says... Okay, I need to go and make a line called DE. So if it is a rectangle, it's creating a rectangle, that means that for 
DE will be 10 centimeters because if that is a 10 centimeters and it's a rectangle, that means that that will be 10 centimeters. Okay, so moving on, the rest should be pretty much fine. When you get to exercise two, okay, so they're giving you a arrow, okay, and they want you to calculate the area of the rectangle. So remember the area is the whole inside part. So the quick way to do it is we're taking the uh, breadth times the length. So the area is length times breadth. Okay. So we're going to take the length times the breadth. So we're going to take this one. It makes almost like an L. So we've got the length times the breadth. 1,9 meters times 0,6. Remember... If we're having meters times meters, it's going to give me meters squared. Remember, this comes from when we did what? I hope you said exponents. Okay, so exponents, we've got m to the power of 1. And then plus at the top, because remember, the multiply means you're adding the exponents. So that means we're going to go 1 plus 1, so that gives us 2. So that's what happens. And then 1, 9 times 0, 6, and that's going to give us our answer. our answer. Okay, then it says work out the length of the base of the triangle. So this is the base, the bottom. How do I know that? Because this line over here is going right through the middle to the top to the point of the triangle. So I can assume that that's probably going to be the height. If this is the base... And they told us it's an equilateral triangle. And then that means that that's going to be one meter. That whole thing here is going to be one meter. And that is going to be one meter. But if you didn't know that, you can just take 0, 2. And if that's a rectangle, this means that this side is going to be the same as this side. So that means that that's going to be 0, 6. So it's going to be 0, 2 plus 0, 6 plus 0, 2. And that is also going to give me 1 meter. Because 0, 2 plus 0, 2, that's 0, 4. Plus 0, 6, 4 plus 6 gives me 10. So that means it's going to become 1 meter. Or you can go 0, 2 plus 0, 6 gives me 0, 8 plus 0, 2. Same thing. Okay. So that is 1 meter. Then it says you calculate the area of the triangle by using the appropriate formula. The formula is half times base times height. So we know that the base is one meter. This whole thing here is the base. This entire line here is the base. And then that would be our height. So one times 0, 0,9 times a half. And that is our answer. And it will be in meters squared because we're taking two measurements times each other. Then, calculate the area of the arrow. So that whole entire arrow that you're now calculating over here, you've done the area of the rectangle, and you've done the area of the triangle. So now what you're going to do is you're going to add those two areas together, and it's going to give you the area of the arrow. And it says to you at the end, and that's remember that's in meters squared, so then it says to you, convert your answer to centimeters squared. Okay, so remember... We are going from meters to centimeters. One meter is 100 centimeters. So if we got meters squared, that means that we've got 100 centimeters is one meter. And we need to square that. So that means it's 100 times 100, which is basically giving us 10,000 because we've got one, two, three, four noughts. So that means our answer, whatever our answer is in here, we need to times then by 10,000 okay, to get us into centimeters squared. One last thing before I continue into leaving this lovely little video. Um, something you need to keep in mind. When they give you shapes like these, it says calculate the area and the perimeter of the following shapes. Just separate the shapes into things that you can find. So I can see this is a rectangle. So if that's a rectangle, that means that this whole line here is going to be 5. And that means that this one is going to be 3. So 3 and 3, 5 and 5. So if this whole line is 5, 
and that's a little bit shorter that's two and that looks about the same so then that would be two and that would be one because together these should become five so we've got two plus two plus one gives me five so when we're doing the perimeter all you do choose a side and then you continue and you go five plus three plus two plus two plus two and then this one as well two plus one plus three and that will be our perimeter area find the area of the square and then you find the area of the rectangle and you add them together okay the same thing over here if you're doing the perimeter remember if that is four centimeters and they've given you a little small little stroke over there so there's a stroke there a stroke there and stroke there so that means that they're actually the same size so if that is four that means that that is four that means that that is four and what does that look like a square because that's four and that's four so that means that this will also be four and four so if you're looking for your um, perimeter you're going to add all of these together four plus four plus four plus four and plus five comma seven you ignore this one okay and then when you are doing the area remember this is your height this is your base of your triangle only these look at this it's your little clue same with this one same 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 thing so if they've given you a little you see there's also the same thing here there's two lines there and two lines there that means that this is also going to be six comma one centimeters if that's four comma two that means that this is four comma two okay so something else you need to see is if that is happening here you need to look at what is going to happen when i need to find my base so we've got something here this is our height for this big triangle so that's our big triangle and this is our height of it and that is our base then we need to look little triangle okay so if our little triangle is here what's going to happen there okay so we need to see what this line will be because this is actually our base of our other triangle this one here okay so what happens is is if this is four comma two four comma two six comma one in the middle this one will have to be the same as this one so these will be the same size so you need to figure out what that size is going to be and i'm going to leave that for you to do but just take a break breather don't stress just do it calmly, you'll be okay. And if all else fails, draw it. See what you can find, see what you can put in. With this one, draw it, if you need to draw it. Um, and the next one is obviously all of the problem solving, which looks very confusing, but just try them step by step, follow the steps, and you'll be fine. Okay, so that is all. And something that you need to keep in mind, here are your formulas. If ever you need to look at them, maybe write them down somewhere. Um, they're not too bad, but with irregular polygons, just think before you do something. All right? That shouldn't be too bad for you. So remember, a square is completely different to a rectangle. Don't get them confused. And then there is your triangle.